Today I want to talk about what consequences the digitalization of all areas of life might have and which role the big tech companies are playing. Big tech are for example Google, Amazon, Meta, Apple or Microsoft. I will also talk about the role of artificial intelligence, shortly called AI. Digitalization made our lives much easier and created a lot of new opportunities. We experience the benefits every day, thus I want to talk about the negative consequences today. A lot of people think about an evil super AI, which will take over the world when we talk about the dangers of AI, but this will probably not happen. Today it's more like we have one small AI for each one a task. One is good, for example, at face recognition, another one is good at chess, and the third one can produce music like Bach. To create an AI of human intelligence, we would have to combine all these skills. But we are quite far from achieving that. Nonetheless, we face new societal challenges in the digital age, but mostly because of the people behind the technologies. One core element is data. Data becomes so important because you can earn a lot of money with it. As a consequence, everything that exists is turned into data also immaterial things like emotions or experiences. Data is collected through digital devices like a laptop or smartphone, but also things like a smartwatch or surveillance cameras. First, these data go to a handful of big tech companies. But what is this data used for? With this data, a profile of you is created, which contains who you are, how you think and what you like. These profiles can be sold to companies which can send you targeted advertisement or could have another interest in you. Like for example a bank which want to see if you're worthy of a loan. If you want to experience how advanced these profiling techniques are today, I would recommend you the interactive documentation made to measure, which I will put in the description. Data is used to optimize digital services to make them more convenient. That doesn't happen because out of friendliness, but because it creates a market advantage. But optimization through data can also mean that workers from Amazon have to wear bracelets which vibrate every time the work is not efficient enough. Data is used to control and survey things that can be harmless, like a person using the data from its diet app to lose weight. But it can also happen that a state is surveilling its citizen and punish them if they do something wrong like for example in China with the social credit system. Data is used to calculate probabilities and predict the future. From data you can build digital tools which can be sold to companies who use them to show their product just to people who will also probably buy it. But it could also be used by the police who wants to use it for prediction of criminality rates within a city. Data is essential to train AI and all our digital devices need AI. To train AI sufficiently, you need a big amount of data and also a big variety. The collection of data mostly happens without consent or compensation. The most private things of a person are recorded and made into money without one knowing where the data will end up in the end. For most services, if you want to use them, you need to agree to their privacy policies. But these are designed in a way that nobody really wants to read them. A survey has shown that for some privacy policies it would take 76 days with each 8 hours working per day to go through one privacy policy. This is on purpose because at the point where your data are circulating in the internet most of the companies don't know anymore where your data will end up. To keep a market advantage companies always need to find new areas from where they can extract data as a consequence, more and more areas of our lives are surveyed, not by government, but by big tech companies, who gain more and more power through making money with our data. They are already taking influence on how business is made and how governments behave. We have to be aware about that nothing in the internet is for free even if we don't pay for a certain service. We as users are conducting a triple role in the digital realm. On the one hand, we are consumers because we buy or use services. At the same time, we are the product which is sold, and thirdly, we are workers who are working for big tech by using their services. AI has become one of the most important technologies in the past years. One could say it became as important as, for example, the electricity. 
Because of its importance, big tech companies are some of the most valuable and profitable in the world, because they are the only ones who can afford to create AI. Thus, more and more areas are getting dependent on big tech. The reason why AI is so expensive is because of three main aspects. It needs a lot of data, infrastructure and AI talent. We already talked about data. Infrastructure are servers, digital platforms and clouds. Servers are basically big computers who process data from any device which has internet access. In a nutshell, clouds are online storages. AI needs a lot of storage, and this is why clouds are becoming more and more important. And Amazon is one of the biggest cloud service providers at the moment. The German police uses the Amazon clouds to save their data, which is an example of how a public institution is dependent on a big tech company. To build and run servers and clouds is very expensive. On platforms, I will say something more later on. To be able to build a good AI, you need AI talent. But in general, there are not enough people with these abilities, thus the people who are skilled enough can charge enormous prices for the work. Mostly only big tech can afford this, so it's hard for smaller companies, governmental institutions or universities to do research and develop AI. This means that big tech can decide for what AIs are used and what they are developed for, and these are mostly financial interests and not necessarily beneficial for the society. That these companies are so powerful is also because they became monopolies. But how did they do that? One reason is that these companies could develop without any regulations for the last 20 years, because the area is so new that there were no really existing any laws. Also, it's very hard to regulate the internet because basically all countries had to agree on the same terms. One important factor is the network effect on platforms. In the digital world, platforms are the pivotal point. The more people use them, the more valuable they get. Thus, the goal of every platform owner is to be the only one in its field. Most of the social and professional life is then organized via these platforms. And the network effect is then that people are more prone to use the platform which is used by more people, so that the platform owner has built a monopoly at some point. If a monopoly was established, companies do everything to keep it. They try to keep their users by making their own services as convenient as possible and harder to use services outside of their ecosystem. That is the so-called login effect. Platforms are the one who mostly connect consumers and producers. Because big tech companies are the only one who basically are able to reach consumers worldwide, both consumers and producers are dependent on them. Without any competition, they can set up any rules for the usage of the platform in a way that maximizes their own profits and hinder the growth of competing services. This is achieved by high fees for producers or buying competing startups. They've overcome the principle that demands regulates the supply, they regulate now both of them. This regulation is also achieved through attention control. People spend more and more time on their digital devices and a big portion of that on the platforms of big tech companies. Accordingly, they have a big portion of our attention and are working on increasing that time. Because if you have the attention of people, you can manipulate their consume behavior. They do that through the control of four key aspects. First, the information control. They can decide which knowledge is spread and which not. Secondly, they control who access the platform and can exclude the people who do not agree to their terms and conditions. Thirdly, they can control the prices and gain an advantage for themselves. And lastly, they can decide what is produced and how. Accordingly, it is not produced what is demanded, but what increases their profits. Through attention control, big tech can manipulate our thinking and acting in directions which fit more to their predictions. In a social media context, this means that the prediction fit best for extreme opinions. Thus, the AIs are designed to push us unconsciously in that direction. They manipulate our unconscious acting and undermine our conscious decision making. Which information is shown to us on social media, but also on Google, depends on our activities and also on our location. And all this, so we spend more and more time in front of the screen. 
This is working because they stimulate our reward center in the brain. Thus, they work in a similar way as drugs and are similarly addictive. How this works in more detail is nicely explained in the documentation The Social Dilemma. The increased political polarization is probably also a consequence of the way AIs spread information on social media. Fake news is spreading six times as fast on Twitter than real news. So if you want a big audience, it's very attractive to tell lies. Political or economical powers can use this to harm an opponent or push their agenda. A very sad example of this is the genocide of the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. This conflict escalated mostly because of the spreading of hate and propaganda through Facebook. This was due to the algorithms of Facebook which actively were spreading content of hate and violence. Because this was the content that people mostly clicked on and shared. The consequence was that thousands of people were killed and harmed and even more had to flee the country. Until today, Facebook never really took responsibility for their role in the genocide. It's a grave error to think AI is objective and could solve social injustice. AI is human-made and used by humans, so it basically has the same worldview as the programmer. And a big part of them are young white men from the Western world. AI is just reflecting the discrimination of the analog world. For example, if you're a person of color, it's a hundred times more likely that uh, AI for facial recognition misidentifies you. But these AIs are used, for example, at airports for passport control. The belief that AI is objective, even though it isn't, makes it more dangerous because people are more prone to trust its judgment. Also, digital devices like computers, smartphones, tablets are made from materials which become less and less and are partly produced by child labor. Additionally, they are designed in a way that they will break fast so people will buy new ones. Conclusion. Big tech companies get more and more power in society without taking any responsibility for the negative consequences from their actions. By being monopolies, they can do what they want and get off scot-free. We can ask ourselves, is it a good idea to put so much power in the hands of companies which do not have the benefits for society in mind, but maximizing their profits at all costs? So, what can we do? One first step would be to regulate the collection of data. Which and how much data should be collected, to whom and how many parties should this data be sold. A step further would be if we start seeing the data of a person as part of the person. Accordingly, this data should then be protected with the same rights and laws as the person itself. Thus, you should gain back the authority over your data in the internet the same way you have authority over your physical body. We can demand that AI is programmed and used in an ethical way to reduce exploitation, discrimination, marginalization and polarization. This could be achieved through making the data market and the way how AI functions open for public inspection. And we can create the possibility for everyone to participate in the digitalization, so the decisions about it are not only made by a few big tech companies. One way to achieve it could be to see AI as common good, like electricity for example. This would mean it could be regulated and funded in the same way by the state. But it would also mean that the state or community of states had to invest a lot of money into servers, clouds and specialists to enable independent research. Generally, we have to start a political discourse about these problems and we need to build up some public pressure. For this, we need more general awareness about the problem, but also its solutions. Those are nicely explained in the video Levers for Advance in Humane Technology from the Center of Humane Technology. The link is in the description below. Maybe you're asking yourself, what can I personally do about all of this? Act consciously in the internet. Every click you give a picture or video or post is like a vote that votes for more content like this. So, do not click on clickbaiting or populist posts. Look for diversity yourself. Do not only follow people you agree with, also follow people you disagree with, so you do not get caught in echo chambers. Here are four proposals for a better use of social media. Firstly, try to reduce screen time. Especially no screen time 30 minutes before going to bed and after getting up. 
Secondly, turn off your notifications so you can decide for yourself when and how often you want to look into an app. Thirdly, turn off autoplay on Instagram, YouTube or similar platforms. Do not watch what is recommended for you, but search consciously for what you want to see so you do not get pushed by the algorithms. And lastly, before you share something, fact check if it's true to stop the spreading of fake news. Additionally, try to use alternatives for services from the big tech companies. Instead of Chrome, you can use Firefox or Brave. Instead of looking things up with Google, you can use Quant or DuckDuckGo. They do not track your activities. Google offers a lot of services and you can try to use alternatives. Instead of using WhatsApp, try to convince your family and friends to use Signal instead. Instead of buying stuff on Amazon or eBay, you can go directly to a shop or to the website of the product vendor. Use Tidal instead of Spotify. And think about how much time of your life do you really want to give companies like Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, Pinterest or Reddit. For the environment, treat your devices with care so they live as long as possible. And if you really need a new one, maybe a second hand is also sufficient. And last but not least, get publicly active. Spread the message of the problem to your social context in the internet and create an awareness of the problem. Maybe get politically active and demand a change for better protection for you and the society.